So, VidCon, that was a, quite a thing, wasn't it? That was a lot more eventful than I ever thought it was possibly going to be. But, as my boy Hazenberg said, he did predict one of the things. Now, yeah, I know, I'm late to the whole story, but please, bear with me. I have a job, and I work weekends, so I can't quite get to the things I want to talk about as quickly as I used to. So, without further ado, let's just talk about the whole thing with Sargon and Anita, shall we? Let's just give you guys the basic rundown and then we'll see some of the footage. There's also a nice little joke in there by Dr. Random Can that I want to show you guys because it's really funny. Sargon and the people he was hanging out with, which included the Honey Badgers, which includes Dr. Random McCam, the Vernaculus, Mundane Matt, which I'm using his testimony because he was there, and loads of others like my friend Crazy Hair, who used to do a guest video for this channel. They were all there, although not in the same place. A lot of them were to the right, some were in the center, Sargon somewhere else. And they decided beforehand that they would not, under any circumstances, interact with Anita or anybody else. They would sit there and quietly watch, in a sort of quiet protest. Like, we're here, we disagree, and there's nothing you can do to stop us from listening, essentially. And then at one point, Monday and Matt said that what happened was this, that he and Anita locked eyes, and she wasn't happy to see him. and was immediately on her phone, and apparently some guy who was security came in, and he was eyeing Sargon throughout the whole thing. And then, she must have seen him at some point, and then proceeded to verbally berate him. Unprovoked, calling him garbage human, and I think she might have called him some other things, but that's all in the footage, so let's watch that. Well, I, I could be wrong, but I think there's someone in the front row that is a notorious harasser of mine that's filming this panel, so I think it's <laughs> important to keep having this conversation. There's only one. Yeah. <laughs> if you Google my name on YouTube, you get shitheads like this dude who are making these dumbass videos that just say the same shit over and over again. And like, I need to give you attention because you're a garbage human. Whatever, dude. Um, but it's, you know, like the fact that these dudes are making endless videos that just go after every feminist over and over and over again, I think is is a part of the issue of why we have to have these conversations. We don't just get to be online. We don't just get to participate like everyone else. There we go. An unprovoked attack on the guy who's just there to listen, not actually to do anything else. Some people said he wanted to have a discussion. Well, if he wanted a discussion, he could have had his name put on the register for questions, which Joey Salads did, and also managed to get his question on before they uh, hand-waved him away and tried to get him out. Th there was actually no need for Anita to do that. Even if she did see him or not, there's no justification for that. It's nothing more than virtue signaling and trying to get her fans riled up. This is essentially what it was. This was, look, pointing at him and saying, this guy is an harasser, otherwise known as this guy is a wrong thinker. And this is the type of people we're against. And these are the type of people we have to deal with. And it shows with the fact that almost hours after that was put on the internet, her fans and the SJW click we're all descending upon him. But it's not really that that's the topic of this video. This is about Sargon's response. Now, he could have done the thing that a lot of people would have expected an anti SUW YouTuber to do, which is to take the moral high ground and say, I would never do such a thing. But what he did was something a lot smarter. He decided to report her to VidCon and called her out by using her own words, using their own rules against her. What she did, according to him, was that this was harassment against a person in the audience who did nothing wrong and therefore she should not be allowed to do the next conference at VidCon because this is bullying behaviour, this talk was about those topics or the talk after that is about those topics and what she's basically done has made her essentially a bully and counterproductive to the work they're trying to do with said cyber harassment, harassment, bullying panel that he wants her to not be a part of. And in fact, he quotes the VidCon code of conduct. Now, people were outraged about this because this is him essentially advocating deplatforming, which he doesn't usually do. And they were saying he was a hypocrite and that you would, he wouldn't like it if they did it to him. But cannot people re really realise that this is his point? That he's trying to see that can they be held to their own standards, to their own rules? Do their rules apply 
to them. Now, I don't know if Hank and John Green, who run VidCon, have actually responded to this yet, but let's just take a look at this. Is it hypocritical? Well, considering he's trying to make a point here, it's, it's quite obvious what he's trying to do here. He's using her own words against her, their own rules, their own words. I find it hard to believe he's being hypocritical here because these are the rules of the game, right, people? Now, this, now quite rightfully, you don't have to pay, play by the rules, but I think this was an opportunity that was worth taking. Let's see how she deals with this. Let's see how John and Hank Green and all the others deal with this bullshit. And of course, predictably, they called him out saying, oh, we're supposed to be the special snowflakes who get offended at everything. You got offended by being called names, just words. Get over yourself. Stop deciding to become this cesarious asshole who's trying to stop Anita from talking about something that essentially is about bullying, but she's a bully. That's kind of like Zoe Quinn talking about that and making a vi victim. Oh, oh, oh. Meanwhile, these very people would advocate and have advocated for the same thing, showing their lack of self-awareness. But did Anita break the rules? Did she break the rules of VidCon and of what she said in the past? So let's just take a look at the VidCon rules first, people. And this is the VidCon Code of Conduct, and this is what it says about harassment. Disorderly conduct includes, but isn't limited to, any behaviour that is illegal, unsafe, disruptive, discriminatory, or causes excessive discomfort to our attendees or guests. If someone doesn't want to talk to you, don't keep talking to them. If you don't, do not have permission to touch someone, do not touch them. VidCon loves surprising and interesting unplanned activities, but sometimes things you think are cool might make other people extremely uncomfortable or be very dangerous. Pranks often make for some great videos, but it makes us really sad when they are emotionally or physically hurtful, so don't do that. If we hear about anyone pranking in ways that are disrupted to the well-being of our guests or attendees, there's a pretty strong chance it will get the pranks to kicked out. Also, please keep in mind that we are sharing a convention centre and hotels with others, and it is our duty to be friendly neighbours. Not everyone gets this thing we are all into. Let's show everyone that we are a positive and friendly group. The words that people need to take into consideration here are these. Disorderly conduct includes but isn't limited to any behaviour that is illegal, unsafe, disruptive, discriminatory or causes excessive discomfort to our attendees or guests. What she did there is that. What more specifically causing excessive discomfort. Causing somebody to feel unsafe. It was an unprovoked attack and this causing discomfort to attendees as well as guests. And she was a guest doing it to an attendee. Yeah, she did break the rules. She has categorically broke the rules. There's no doubt about that. By VidCon's own standards, she's broken the rules. But hey, let's go to Anita's own standards. Let's go back a couple of years or a year to uh, her speech at the UN. By doing this work, I have been the target uh, for three years nonstop um, of egregious online harassment in all levels. Um, I think it's important to, to recognize that harassment is as someone had mentioned, it's not just what is legal and illegal, right? Harassment is uh, threats of violence, but it's also the day-to-day -day grind of you're a liar, you suck, you, you know, making all of these hate videos to attack us on a regular basis and the mobs that come um, from those hate videos, etc. If you Google my name on YouTube, you get shitheads like this dude who are making these dumbass videos that just say the same shit over and over again. And like, I hate to give you attention because you're a garbage human. What she talked about there in that speech is essentially what she did to Sargon. Maybe not saying that he sucked, but calling him names. That goes against her own world view, her views on harassment, her views on the internet and how to do these kind of things. She is an harasser, so therefore, yeah, she shouldn't be on that panel. She's probably getting disrepute. What's the point in having a bully there to talk about an anti-harassment thing. Doesn't make much sense, does it? Now, will she be deplatformed? I doubt it, but we don't know. I have no idea because the Greens haven't commented. Do I think that Sargon wants her to be that deplatformed? Probably not, judging by his track record. Judging by her track record, if the shoe was on the other foot, no doubt in my mind she would call for his deplatforming to have him kicked from VidCon if he did the same thing to her. Ultimately, I feel that this was not hypocrisy, but this is simply playing the game and showing people just how unself-aware and hypocritical these SJWs actually are and that Anita herself has fucked up. She's made herself prove the anti-SJW point that these are the harassers, these are the bullies 
that we're dealing with, it's not us, or at least most of us. There's a few people who may have been going on in there doxing and harassing people, and they should be called out for it, and they have been. But it's mostly coming from them. They are the cry bullies, and she's proving that point by being a bully. Maybe not a cry bully, but she's being a bully there. So, yeah, well done, Anita. You're proving that point. Anyway, that's the end of the video. I tried to keep it as brief as possible. Probably hasn't been. But anyway, I've had fun, and I'll see you all later. <laughs> Thank you.